Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about top 10 facts about the Battle of Thermopylae. So before starting this video like this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. Popular culture has been kind to the historical episode of the Battle of Thermopylae, but with romanticized anecdotes intertwined between the actual events, that took place before and during the particular military encounter. One apt example would pertain to King Leonidas I himself, who was probably closer to the age of 60 at the time of the battle, as opposed to what Hollywood would make us believe, by contrast, Xerxes was only 38 years old at the time of the battle. So without further ado, let us try to sift some of the facts from fiction, and have a gander at the 10 things one should know about the Battle of Thermopylae, a momentous episode of history that stands testament to the importance of tactics and bravery in war. Number 10. The major cause of the battle can be traced back to the Ionian Revolt. The Greek cities in the region of Ionia in modern-day Turkey came under the Persian Empire since 547 BC. In 499 BC, the Greeks in the region revolted in what is known as the Ionian Revolt. The Greek city-states of Athens and Eritrea supported the Ionian Revolt, during which parts of the region were burned by the Greeks including Persian temples in the cities. Though the revolt was ultimately crushed by the Persians, Darius I, king of the Persian Empire at the time, vowed to punish those involved in it, especially Athens. This led to the first Persian invasion of Greece, in 492 BC involving the famous Battle of Marathon in, which the Greeks decisively defeated the more numerous, Persian army inflicting heavy casualties on them. Number 9. Persian Empire was the largest in ancient history, and was ruled by Xerxes the Great the son of Darius I, Xerxes I, also known as Xerxes the Great, became ruler of the Persian Empire in 486 BC. He planned a massive invasion of Greece to avenge for the Persian losses, in the Ionian Revolt and the Battle of Marathon. The Persian Empire at the time was the largest ever empire in ancient, history stretching from the Indus River in Asia to the Nile River in Africa. Xerxes used his vast resources to assemble soldiers, build ships and buy supplies for his invasion of Greece. Number 8. The Persian army numbered probably in hundreds, of thousands Hellespont is a narrow, natural strait. Xerxes decided that the strait would be bridged to shorten his route to Europe. The resulting spectacular pontoon or floating bridges are considered feats of exceptional, engineering which was beyond any other contemporary state. In 480 BC, the Persian army crossed over the floating bridges to reach Europe. Though ancient historians claim that the strength of the Persian army was in millions, modern scholarly estimates are generally in the range of 70,000, 300,000. A fleet of about 1,000 warships escorted this massive land army. Even by modern estimates, it was still one of the largest and most sophisticated army ever assembled for invasion in the ancient world. Number 7. The Greek defense against the Persians was planned by Themistocles. Greece around the time of the battle was a collection of small city-states with a history of fighting against each other for regional supremacy. The largest of the city-states, Athens and Sparta, were bitter rivals. In 481 BC, a confederate alliance of Greek city-states was formed to defend their land against the Persians. This was remarkable for the Greek world, as many of the city-states were still technically at war with each other. Athenian politician and military general, Themistocles, who had been preparing for war by strengthening the Athenian fleet, primarily prepared the Greek strategy of defense against the Persians. Number 6. Thermopylae's selection as battlefield was a great strategic move. To defend against the Persian invasion, the Greeks brilliantly chose the narrow coastal pass of Thermopylae to nullify the numerical advantage of the Persians. It is believed that the Thermopylae Pass at the time was only 200 yards at its widest, and so the Persians had to come through it in small numbers, which could be counted by the relatively small Greek force. Also their cavalry would be rendered useless. Themistocles understood that the Persian navy could sail through the Straits of Artemisium to reach behind the Greek ground force and surround it. Thus, to block the strait, he positioned there an allied Greek navy of which he was the de facto commander. Number 5. Greeks were led at Battle of Thermopylae by Spartan King Leonidas. At the time of the Persian invasion, the Spartans were celebrating the festival of Carnea and were forbidden from military activity. Ancient historian Herodotus reports that Spartan King Leonidas consulted the sacred oracle of Delphi who said that either your town would be sacked or it would mourn the loss of a king. Leonidas believed he was that king and agreed to lead the Greek defense at Thermopylae. He chose 300 Spartans with living sons to make sure their bloodline was not terminated. 
Along the way his army was reinforced by contingents from various Greek cities, and by the time it reached Thermopylae it numbered around 7,000. Number 4. The Persians failed to make any headway in the first two days of the battle. In August or September 480 BC, the Persian army of Xerxes the Great met the Greek allied, force led by King Leonidas in the Battle of Thermopylae. The Persians attacked the Greeks in waves of around 10,000 men, but failed to make any headway during the first two days of the battle. These attacks included attacks by the elite force of Persian soldiers known as the Immortals. At the simultaneous naval battle of Artemision, a Persian fleet of around 1,000 warships was up against a Greek fleet of 200 warships. There too the Persians failed to make any headway. They sent 200 warships to reach behind the Greek land force through a different, longer route but unfortunately for them they all drowned during a storm at night. Number 3. The Greek used their famous phalanx formation in the battle. At the Battle of Thermopylae, the Greeks used their famous phalanx formation in which, the men formed a wall of overlapping shields and protruded their spears out from the sides of the shields. The famous Greek shield known as Hoplon was heavier, and stronger than their opponents, handing them an advantage. Their long spears known as Dori gave them more distance, and force against their opponents' smaller weapons. Also the Greeks' strong lamella armor was able to withhold the Persian arrows and spears. The Persians wore light armor as they needed agility to fight in the open plains of Asia. Their armor, even of the immortals, was easily pierced by the Greek Dory. Number 2. The famous last stand of the Greeks included 1400 soldiers, not 300. After losing tens of thousands of his men in the first two days of battle, Xerxes had a stroke of fortune when a Greek named Ephialtes informed him of a mountain pass that would lead his men behind the Greek army. Ephialtes betrayed his homeland in hope of receiving a reward from the Persians. His name came to mean nightmare in the Greek language. Leonidas was aware of the mountain pass and had placed a force of 1,000 Phocians to guard it, but they withdrew thinking incorrectly that their homeland Phocis was under attack. When Leonidas came to know that he was being outflanked, he dismissed the bulk of the Greek army. The only remaining soldiers to guard their retreat were 300 Spartans, 700 Thespians and 400 Thebans. Thus the Greeks' last stand at Thermopylae involved around 1400 men, and not 300 as is popularly proclaimed and portrayed. Number 1. Though Persians won the Battle of Thermopylae they couldn't conquer Greece. With the Persians surrounding the Greek army, the phalanx was broken and there was open battle. In one of the most famous last stands in history, Leonidas, and his men fought valiantly against the Persians but died to the last man. It is said Leonidas died after being struck from an arrow. Although Persians were known for treating valiant warriors with great honor, Xerxes was so outraged at his losses that he ordered, that the head of Leonidas to be cut off and his body crucified. The simultaneous naval battle of Artemisium ended, as the Greeks withdrew after their defeat at Thermopylae. Xerxes went on to burn Greek cities to ground, as he had desired, though most of the people were evacuated. The Persians were crucially defeated in the naval battle of Salamis in late 480 BC, and then decisively in the land battle of Plataea in 479 BC, thus ending the second Persian invasion of Greece. Leonidas' sacrifice, along with that of his Spartan hoplites, did not prevent the Persians from moving down the Greek coast into Boeotia. In September 480 BC, however, the Athenian navy defeated the Persians at the battle of Salamis, after which the Persians returned home. Nonetheless, Leonidas' action demonstrated Sparta's willingness to sacrifice itself for the protection of the Greek region. Leonidas achieved lasting fame for his personal sacrifice. Hero cults were an established custom in ancient Greece from the 8th century BC onward. Dead heroes were worshipped, usually near their burial site, as intermediaries to the gods. Forty years after the battle, Sparta retrieved Leonidas' remains, or what were believed to be his remains, and a shrine was built in his honor. What do you think of our video? Which of the facts about Battle of Thermopylae shocked you the most? If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.